Hey ladies and gents, this is Linda Faychick777 and today I'm coming at you with another project for uh, the Summer Bazaar uh, craft series. I really kind of had to think whether or not I wanted to do this video because it's actually going to be pretty quick and easy but I wanted to just kind of share it with you anyway because I know you guys are interested. It's an easy project that can be done. Um, doesn't really take a whole lot of money, doesn't take too much time, um, and you've got yourself a nice little thing to sell, and so you can see what I've done here. Um, what I do is I take like old frames, um, and I distress them, and then, um, kind of make them look like a window and I add a quote usually that I print off the computer I add like I for my windows I actually use like Tim Holtz paper but you know it doesn't matter but it's kind of like a collage type paper I usually like to add some kind of hardware um, and it's a finished project so this one I actually came across at Habitat store let me grab here real quick They had these for um, 25 cents, and they are pieces that you put together and make your own frames. And these are the same type of things that come in like canvases. Um, so if you have old canvases that you're not really using, you can take the canvas off and you have the wood frame. Um, anyway, so for a dollar, you know, I was able to get all the pieces to make a frame, which was like this, what I did. And normally what I like to do when I go to distress um, a window, so I'll give you some tips for distressing, is I usually like to paint it with kind of a brown um, chalk paint first. So I just use this Waverly brand from Walmart. It's called Truffle, a nice uh, dark brown first. Or you could use like a brown stain if you have it on hand, but I don't have a lot of stains. So... Um, paint it with the truffle paint, let it dry, and then I go over it with a spray paint, or just a white matte uh, spray paint. Um, I think it's Rust-Oleum, it's a primer and spray paint in one, but I like the flat spray paint. I don't want it glossy for old windows, uh, th the look of old windows. Um, if you have white chalk paint, you can certainly do that versus spray paint. But I find that, you know, I don't mind if I paint this on and have brush strokes, but I hate to have brush strokes in my top coat. I don't know, it call me weird, but it just drives me insane. So I will usually paint on the brown, and I like to use these type of kind of just El Cheapy uh, brushes, and you just I mean, it doesn't have to be full coverage. You're just slapping it on, just one nice, uh, one nice coat. If you miss a couple areas, that's okay. Let it dry, and then I go over the top with a flat spray paint, or you can choose to go over top with a uh, top coat. Okay, so, and then I start sanding the edges. So this is one of them I've made. The quotes, I go and I look online and I look up, I go Google and I look up um, inspirational farmhouse quotes and I find ones that I like. And some of them I like, but I changed them up. And this is like one of them. There was a quote that was very similar to this, but I just kind of changed it up and made it my own. So it was a little bit different than all the quotes we're seeing out there all the time. Um, and I print these on transparency paper. Um, you can get this at like Staples. It's just a thin um, transparency and it is called transparency paper. Mine is for inkjet because I have an inkjet printer. And for inkjet, it is a little bit rough on one side, which is the side it prints on, and it's smooth on the other. They do make transparencies for laser printers as well. But like I said, mine is an inkjet. Staples is a little bit expensive, so I usually buy mine on eBay for a pack of 50 for 20 some dollars. It'll last me about a year. But that's what I print my quotes on, okay? And then I just pick out some really pretty paper, usually, like I said, like Tim Holtz paper, because it's really distressed looking. Um, and it looks kind of old and vintage-like, and that's what I like. So this is one of the projects I've made. I'll just kind of show you a couple of them. Okay, and then I always like to just cover the back, okay? And then I still have to go through and add my picture hangers on the top. Do not forget to put your picture hangers on there, okay? So I like it to look finished off. So there's one that I've made. 
This is a fun and different one. This was actually an old like wooden win window like planter box that I had. It was turned this way and it had a planter box on it and I found it at Goodwill. So I took that part off and used the window. Uh, spray painted it, sanded it, distressed it up, and then I made um, the quote um, on my printer. And then this is a chipboard word from Michaels uh, that I spray painted black. And then I added a, this is a little hook that I got at Hobby Lobby and they're half price so it cost me about $1.50. Um, I'll bring it up a little closer so you can see Tim Holtz paper in the background. But I like to use these um, sometimes the chipboard words or the wood words just to give it a little bit of depth and make it a little bit different. So I thought that was kind of cute. And then of course finish off the back. So there's that one. Here's another kind of window one. Now when you're looking for, I want to give you a tip, when you're looking to do these, and if you go, you can certainly just print your quote on paper. You don't have to print it onto a transparency. If you don't want and you want to print it directly on paper, but you need to think most of our printers are eight and a half by eleven size. Um, you know, if you have a twelve by twelve printer, you don't have to worry about it so much. Uh, but most of us have eight and a half by eleven size. So when you're looking for frames, um, you know, I go to Goodwill and things like that. I hunt for old frames. I try to hunt for ones that are kind of a square shape or a rectangular shape. Um, but you need to think that. It really can't be any bigger than eight and a half by eleven, especially if you're going to print something on it. Because if it's bigger than that, and you go to put, you know, you print out your um, quote on transparency, or you print it out on your paper, and you go to put it in your frame, your frame's going to be too big, and your paper's too small. So keep that in mind to look for frames like this is an eight by eight opening. So look for frames that are about the size of what you're going to be printing off. Okay. So this is just a really fun little small one. I got this at Habitat store for a dollar, added just a little handle. I didn't distress the handles on some of them. Some of them I left them um, undistressed, you know, what the heck. But I always like to put a little handle on it. It's kind of fun. Here's another one, those boards that I got, uh, the wood frames that I made, distressed it all up added a handle that I got at a Habitat store, added my quote and the paper. This is one of my favorites. Okay, so, and then of course the back, and I again have to add all my hangers on there. Okay, um, and when I made these last year, I only made two. I was just starting it out, Christmas Bazaar, I was in two Christmas Bazaars, I only made two. They both sold at my first Christmas Bazaar within a half hour, and I can't remember, I think I had 12 to 15 dollars on them they were gone so I've decided to make a ton more for um, the summer um, festival that I'm doing so okay and I did the same thing with this brown paint <clears throat> spray paint over the top and I like to take my electric sander I sand with my electric sander it's quick it's done but of course you can just sand paper by hand if you want to okay so let me show you this is a frame that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. Um, they were in the clearance. There was no glass in it, nothing. It was like this, except it was brown. I have gone already ahead and spray painted it. Um, it was on clearance for like $2. It was normally like $30 some dollars. What a score. I bought all they had, which was three. Um, so like I said, I've spray painted it already. Okay. And what I have, as I have my husband do, is I'll have him drill holes for me. Um, as well. I could do it myself, but you know, he likes to help out. So I have him drill holes for me. I give him the handles that I'm going to use for each one and I have him drill the holes for me. Um, okay, so this, I didn't have to paint first because the frame was already a dark brown. I lucked out already a dark brown frame, already painted a dark brown. All I had to do was spray paint it white. So you get to that point and like I said, normally I use my electric uh, sander, but you can take some sandpaper by hand. And when I distress, I like to kind of distress, I'll immediately go for any of the sharp edges first. Okay, look at that, just one sand. Look at that distress, nice and easy already. 
See, you don't have to have your electric sander, but I have so many I'm usually doing it once and I zip, zip, zip through each one, lay it down, go on to the next one. Okay, tin that process and I hit all those sharp corner edges, even like right on these little edges here. Okay. Okay, and let's get this edge here. This one was like really nice because it was already done for me, already painted underneath. It's a really nice, when my husband drilled the holes in the other ones, um, it was really hard drilling. He thinks that this wood is actually oak, which is probably why it was so expensive to begin with. And then I will go to the inner corners here. I'll even go to these little inner corners. Okay, use my paintbrush and get all the dust off. <laughs> paintbrush has got wet because I just washed them out. Now you can choose to leave it like that and call that your distressing if you want. Um, or if you want, you can kind of distress, um, you know, along the insides, the centers in here, if you want to distress it a little bit more. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to leave it like that and show you one that I did with my sander. Okay, so I'll move this out of the way, but like I said, you can just leave it just like that, really minimal distressing. But I like to go in, kind of go in and distress on this part too, and that's why I like my electric sander. But you could be totally done, easy process right there. And the reason bringing this back, I like these kind of frames because these, when we're done, it's actually got an inset. Okay, and what I do is I inset my transparency in here. I'll show you that. And then I lay my print paper on the very back, back here. And it makes it really look like a window, almost like a 3D kind of window shadow box type thing. Okay, all right. So this is one I did with my electric sander. So you can see how much more distressed it did. I distressed all along here like normal, but it gave it kind of a thicker distressing. And then I distressed through the center as well. Okay, and these are the um, holes my husband had already pre-drilled for me. Let's see, electric sander, but you don't have to. Like I said, if you don't have one, you can distress just like you did and just take your sandpaper and distress right through the center of it. Okay, um, then the next thing we've got here is I have a quote we're going to use here that I have printed out on transparency. I made it just the right size of this little inset here. Normally, that's where your glass would go, right, if you got a, a frame with glass. Like I said, these didn't have any doesn't bother me I don't need the glass if I find frames with the glass in them I'm doing these projects um, I just take the glass out anyway so and then what I'll do is I will glue this transparency right in that little spot where the glass would go okay so let's get the glue going right in there and when I glue I use Fabri-Tac okay um, or this is Fabri-Fix it's kind of the same thing Hobby Lobby has them both um, I glue like in in the seam, okay? I don't glue necessarily right on this flat ledge. I glue in the seam, in that corner. And the reason I do that is because when you go to put this transparency on there, that glue is going to spread. And if it's on this seam, it's going to spread and it's going to spread down onto your transparency. And then you've got great big old glue glob on your transparency, and you can't wipe that off. If you get a big glue glob on your transparency, you have to redo your whole transparency. You can't rub that glue off. Um, these are very delicate, okay? So you have to keep these as clean as possible and be as careful as possible. So I put my glue right down in that corner, okay? And I just do a nice little thin line, okay? Because it's going to spread anyway. So let's just do a nice little thin line across in that corner. Let's 
get this going all the way around. Okay, and make sure there's none. So I've got it right in that little corner so you can see my bead of glue. It's kind of shiny right there in the corner, not on the seam, seam itself. Okay, make sure I've turned this way because my holes are down at the bottom where I'm going to put my um, hardware. Um, I'm going to make sure that, you know, I'm right side up and I'm turned the way I'm supposed to be. So I'm laying it in backwards. And we're just going to gently lay it in there. Because once you lay it down, you're done. And believe me, I have messed up plenty of time and I have to do it again. And you don't want too big of a bead of glue because it does spread. You can use another nice option that you can use is um, double stick tape. That would be a nice option. I almost got that out, but I thought I'm going to go ahead and use the glue. I've done it before. I'm used to it, but if you don't want the glue to spread, I would go with double stick tape. Okay, and I'm just going to let that sit a bit. Okay, looking good, looking good. Alright, let that sit. Okay, I try not to press too hard. I just basically take my fingernail and I go down in that corner. Because like I said, it will spread. I try not to spread too close to the edge as long as it gets a little bit on there. I let it sit a minute and then I kind of go spread it some more. Try not to get any glue at all on the transparency, front or back. Because believe me, I've got it on there and you can't get that glue off at all. It just leaves a great big yucky water stain and it looks stupid and you can't get it off. I'm going to call it a water stain. Okay, so I've got that in there. Alright, so now I've got the paper I'm going to use, a beautiful Tim Holtz um, paper. I think this one was from... It's one of my favorites. I think it says Wallflower Collection. It's just one of my favorites. It's got beautiful imagery in there. Um, just gorgeous. It looks real vintage. Really pretty. Just gorgeous. And I try to find papers that have a little bit of print on them, but not too much. Like I would probably use the back side of that, or if it's got just a, you know, one a little bit of print around the edge, but you've got a, a spot here because otherwise it's too busy and you can't read your words very well. Okay, but like that where it's all script and text, it's really light and faint. But I love like that. It's like one of my favorites. Really beautiful. So I think it's Wallflowers, this collection here, which is this. It's not too much. There's a little bit of handwriting, but it's fairly faint. So it's not going to interfere with reading this, okay? And I'm going to place that. I made it big to go along the outside, okay? How much room? I probably got about an inch on each side. Okay, yeah, so about an inch on each side. I'm going to move that out of the way because I do not want to get any glue on it. Okay, we're just going to put about an inch on each side or so. Just enough. It's probably about a half inch, but that'll work. So I hope you like this tutorial. I was just really wrestling with it whether or not I should even show it because it's fairly easy. But, um, you know... I'm give you some little hints and some tips and stuff to go along with it and it makes two for at least some kind of video right okay so I've got that come back around <laughs> I'm glad I looked at it might want to put your hardware in first were you all yelling at me to put my hardware in because that paper I just did is going to cover that up so let's get my hardware in I found this is a cool looking handle. And then we have just enough time. That glue won't um, set before I get this on there. 
got a little bit of working time. Let's get that hardware in there. I'd like to do that so I can cover the hardware up, right? You don't want that raw edge to be seen. That's not real pretty. Okay, we got one side in. Can't see. There we go. This is fun, right? Watching me screw in my hardware. That's all part of it, right? We're live. You want to see it start to finish. That's what we're doing. <laughs> All right. Okay, hardware on. Okay, and let's get that sheet on there. This glue's still okay. I screwed that in quick enough. <sighs> Make sure there's no like dust or anything in there because once this is glued, you're not getting in it. A bit of dust right there. Okay. Yeah, once this is glued down, you can't get to any of that. If you see any lint or something in there, you can't get in there. And I just kind of even it on the back a little bit, just like that. And if you didn't want to put a back or a cover over this, since it's double-sided, that looks nice and finished. No worries about it. You can totally leave it like that, but I'm going to go ahead and still put a backing on. So I just cut it the same size as the paper just to make it look a little more finished but you know if you want to save a little bit of money you're out of cardstock whatever I don't know why I chose white I guess maybe because the frames white I mean you could put a black backing on it or whatever but like I said if you don't and you're using double-sided paper that looks really cute and distressed no worries All right let's fit that right over the top Now these are particular, in particular, are my favorite uh, type of frames to do versus the ones I just showed you, like I said, because it does look a little bit more kind of um, shadow boxy, kind of 3D-ish. Okay, all finished except for my picture hanger. I won't forget those. I've got a whole bunch of them. And there is our window. Isn't that gorgeous? Um, and see, this is why I love it because it just looks the, the transparency is up off of the paper. And so there's kind of our distressed looking um, window. And I think it looks just completely gorgeous. Love it. Um, and these are great too, but these, you know, because I just had to glue on the back of a frame, it didn't necessarily have a little lip, so the transparency is right on the paper. And this, the transparency is kind of off of the paper a little bit, so it gives you some depth. So these are my favorite ones to do, but I'll use anything I can kind of get my hands on that's very inexpensive. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Nice and easy, uh, but I did want to kind of share that with you in case you decide to do these. These are really nice for for gifts um, anything like that you know you could do someone a gift maybe using their last name or something and list all of the kids in the family anything like that really cute something they can hang on like a gallery wall you know in their house or something like that you can make it really personal um, Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions or anything, I will be happy to answer them for you. Please leave a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, I have a few videos to catch up on. I apologize. It's just kind of time crunch getting stuff done for the bazaar. But I love reading your comments. I thank you for sharing your time with me. And I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.